Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Revit Vertical Gore-Tex Jacket. This new for 2022 textile touring jacket has very good waterproofing and ventilation qualities from its laminated outer shell and does what it does at actually a pretty cost-effective price. The outer shell is made from a 400 denier nylon with a two-layer Gore-Tex membrane laminated to it for more immediate waterproofing than you get from having the Gore-Tex sat loosely behind the outer. It's able to shed more water straight away and the jacket will also dry completely much more quickly than one with what's called a drop liner. So if you've ever got your kit soaking wet on a ride and then found it still sodden in the morning when you come to put it back on again, that's what laminated membranes like this do away with. The fact it's two layer Gore-Tex means there's a layer less than you get in the really premium Gore-Tex laminated jackets. This one lacks a layer that sits between the Gore-Tex and the skin which is there to protect the membrane itself from damage. Because this jacket doesn't have that protection, the membrane itself is slightly thicker to make it more robust. That means this jacket isn't quite as breathable as a three layer gore laminated jacket. But there are definite upsides to having a two layer laminate instead. In my experience, the two layer laminates like this are lighter and more flexible than the three layer versions. So that's one benefit. The other is that they're cheaper. As an illustration, Revit's Dominator 3 jacket has a three layer gore laminate and that costs 1200 pounds. This is 500 pounds. That Dominator 3 does have other features to make it cost so much more but you usually pay a fair chunk more than 500 quid for a three layer gore laminated jacket. The construction of this jacket is actually pretty simple, which tends to be the case with the laminated material. The nylon makes up the vast bulk of the jacket with only a synthetic leather trim around the neck and then some light reflective panels that really add much extra. It does up with a zip down the front and there's a storm flap over that to make sure that rain can't reach the teeth of the zip and then creep through there. The collar is a trusty Revit design. It's a popper that secures onto this adjustable plate so you can set your preferred tension around the neck. And then there's the usual stud on the other side of the collar as well so you can secure the tab back and out of the way. There's nothing fancy about the cuffs either. They adjust decent wide openings that secure with a Velcro tab at the bottom. I wore this jacket in the cold weather of February and I had plenty of room to get winter gloves inside the sleeves. There are fit adjusters below the elbows on each side at the waist, which helps you take up the slack when you take out the removable thermal liner. And there are also pull cord adjusters inside the lower hem, so you can pull it tight to get a good seal against the wind. So one of the big benefits of a laminated waterproof membrane is around ventilation. With a regular waterproof membrane, that's still in there to act as a barrier which stops air getting in when you open a vent. With a laminate like this, the membrane separates, so more air can flow through to the inside. The vertical jacket has two large vents on the front, which open up with a zip and Velcro before securing back with what's called Fidlock. It's a pretty new method where the stud locates into its groove with magnets to hold the flat back and expose a mesh covered air vent and then around the edge is a rubber dam to stop water creeping under these vent fasteners when they're done up. Then there are two vents on the upper back that help to draw warm air out from inside the jacket. So last things last with the outer, there are four pockets. You get two at the waist which secure with poppers and a zip and then there's a small card pocket at the left wrist. On top of that, there's a very simple map pocket at the lower back, which has a zipped side entry. So moving to the inside, there's a removable thermal liner that has sleeves and it has one internal pocket. When I wore this jacket in February, I left that liner in place and I wore a thermal mid layer and also a base layer underneath to give me some extra protection against the cold. The temperature was down around five degrees Celsius and I was perfectly comfy riding like that. Behind that thermal liner is the main mesh liner. And within that, you'll find two more pockets for carrying stuff and then the right size and shape for a kind of normal sized phone and wallet. In there is also the standard body armor. So at the shoulders and the elbows and it's Revit's C-Flex armor. It meets the higher level two within the CE standard for impact protection. And that armor's also passed optional tests to show it does its job in both extreme heat and extreme cold. So you know that that armor is serious stuff. There's no back or chest protection as standard, but there are pockets for both if you want to buy those protectors separately and add them to the jacket. The overall protection level for this jacket is a pass at the middle level of three within the CE safety standard, and that's double A. Finally, on the inside, there are both long and short connection zips to attach this jacket to Revit's trousers. Revit recommend the Globe Gore-Tex trousers to pair up with this jacket. They're £439.99 a pair, and they come in three leg lengths, which is a handy feature you find on most Revit jeans. 
Add a pair of those to this jacket, which costs 500 quid, and you're up to 940 quid for both jacket and jeans. And together, that's less than Revit's range topping jacket on its own. I found this jacket really comfortable and effective when I wore it out on the road. It's more flexible than a three layer jacket, in my opinion, yet it still gives great weather protection and ventilation for summer riding. If I knew I was gonna be out a lot of the time in the stinkiest weather, really cold and really wet, then I'd be tempted to find the extra money for a top end three layer Gore-Tex kit. But unless I was looking at really heavy duty riding like that all the time, then I think I'm very tempted by this sort of kit because I think it covers the vast majority of riding conditions that we face here in the UK. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Revit Vertical Gore-Tex jacket. But if there isn't a thing you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.